Howdy y'all, I'm Oliver the Shoe Man, and today we're going to be bringing back a pair of Red Wing Iron Rangers that have, they're, they're, they're pretty rough, not gonna lie, but I think with a little work and some loving, they'll be back to the way they were. And this time we're gonna be upgrading them a little bit so that we don't have this issue anymore and the way we're going to do that we'll take, take these laces out so this piece alrighty so this piece right here that piece is a leather welt it goes from this side of the boot all the way around to that side of the boots and it's stitched to the boots right there this back portion just gets nailed. You can see there's not really many nails holding it on, which is why over time it started to rot and fall off. So what we're going to do is convert these from a 270 degree welt, which is one that starts here and goes all the way around, to a 360, which goes all the way around, extends back here, all the way around the shoe. And that will give a much more sturdier and wider foundation for the boot to make it more comfortable and durable. Um, but we got a long way to go before we can get to that point. There we go. We're gonna start by disassembling the boots. Now these have been resold before. Don't know how many times, but the soles weren't stitched on they're just glued on, which the right way would be to have stitched it on. But, I mean, the sole stayed on this long, so... Who knows? But, just going to... So what they did was they put a midsole, stitched the midsole on, and then glued the sole on top of it. I don't know why they did that. They could have just stitched it all together. But, oh well. Let's see if we can just rip that off. Just like that, the sole's off. We have a welt. And this is the shank. It's pretty rusted out. Go ahead and replace that as well. And now, this is what we're left with. It's pretty dang bad. But, next step is to take this welt off, which should come off pretty easily because it's done with the chain stitch, which is one thread going in and out creating that chain I don't know why I'm having issues right now there we go ah there you go there's the Welt and it's part of the midsole. Now we gotta take this thread out, and if we're lucky, it'll all come out in one go. Grab this piece. Let's make it good. There you go. Seems coming all out. this last little bit. And now we got the threads out. I'll try to get this foot bed out, but we got a couple nails here in the back portion holding it in. So just take our heel prior and kind of run it up underneath. 
be careful because the leather is kind of dry. And I don't want to rip it before I can get some moisturizers in there. go there's the footbed it is about done and hard as a rock Oof. can't reuse that now we have this piece right here which is called the gemming now the gemming once you have your footbed it gets glued all the way around right just like that and then you see those holes? That is what those holes get stitched to along with the welt. All three get stitched together. Um, and yeah, it's not much use anymore. So I'm gonna save the footbed for a template because we're gonna make new ones. Uh, excuse me. And now, at this stage, we have the boot pretty much completely taken apart next would be assembly but first it's bath time all right so we have our bath drawn with some lukewarm water we also have some Lincoln easy cleaner and some this is Dawn dish soap, just in a different bottle. We've mixed it together in a little concoction, and we have a copper brush. Now, I don't recommend doing this just as a daily general um, maintenance for your boots. This is more of a drastic, deep clean. We're gonna try to get a lot of that paint off and just get these back to what they look like when you first bought them. So we're gonna start by soaking them in. Now, I want you to see, this water's clear, right? Watch as we start to clean and scrub the boots. Now you could use a, a nylon bristle brush. I'm using a copper brush because of that paint that's on there. It takes quite a bit of scrubbing to get that off. This copper brush isn't really doing much damage to the leather itself. Simply, there you go. Simply because it's a smooth leather and yeah, you're putting some scratches in there, but it'll all buff out in the end and it'll be with some creams and polishes and other good stuff it'll look real good you won't be able to tell but yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna speed this section up for you guys just so you don't get bored I'll be here for a good 15 to 20 minutes scrubbing away and I just want you guys to see the difference of the boot before and the water of the before and after this process so I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up that way you guys can see it but you don't have to sit here for another 15 to 20 minutes on top of the rest of the video So here we are after 
Oh, I know that looks like blood. It's 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 leather dye. It's just coming off, which I'm surprised. It's starting to come off. It's usually wears off, but you know, I didn't cut myself. As you can see, you got most of the paint off. See, I don't see any. But the only thing I couldn't get off was this here at the toe. It's, it's just weird, like hard stuff. Almost like tar had dried on the boot. So I'll see if I can take care of that by slightly sanding it after it dries. And there's little flecks here and here. I'll, I got the majority off. And now I'm gonna let this dry and look at the water. Ugh. But I'm gonna let this dry, and as you can imagine, this is gonna be very dry, the leather, once all the water escapes. So once we get back, we're gonna be putting some moisturizers, some leather conditioners, some creams on this to bring back the color and moisture so the leather doesn't crack. It's been a little bit since I last spoke with you guys about these Iron Rangers. Um, we have the footbeds in place held in by a couple of nails and that stitch right there. Which This just helps keep the footbed in the correct orientation that way it don't get twisted. Um, but we did we put some shoe creams, dyes, conditioners, moisturizers to bring back that color as best as possible. I know it looks rough, but it's a lot better than what it was as you guys saw before. So, um, And then we'll do some more work to it as well once we get near the end of it. Um, but now, this is what I was waiting for. I had to order some welts. Some welts. And the welts get stitched on to the outside of the shoe like that and what that does is it ends up looking like this we got to stitch all the way around we got that shank in there and from there we once we fill the the cork or the the cavity with cork and we're going to do a, a three-quarter leather piece and then the cork in the forefront stitch it all together and we'll be ready for the soles after that um, but the main difference with a lot of Iron Rangers, right here in the back, you see it, it kind of folds over. It's supposed to fold over. And the welt starts there and goes all the way around to there. Where we, on this one, we extended it all the way around. By folding this piece up, down like that, and just continuing to stitch all the way around. And making it a 360 instead of a 270. This will give the boots a wider base and just a little bit more structurally sound um, compared to having it nailed in the back because this is this is like toast. You don't want to nail this back. So we're doing the 360 welts to upgrade them. We got our new welts. We got a thick leather midsole and then a thick rubber sole. Uh, this is what the customer chose, and so that's what we did. And it's gonna be pretty thick to stitch all these together, pushing my machine to the edge, to its limits. But we got brown thread on the bottom, a white thread, beige thread on top, so it'll end up being brown thread along here, and a beige thread along the bottom. So, like I said, we're kind of pushing our luck here. Let's sit it on. And pray to God that it stitches perfectly. Alright, so, like I said, we were pushing our machine to the limits, and that's why I wasn't able to get the rest of that film, because it kept on breaking, and I had to adjust it, and adjust it, and adjust it. But we ended up getting it. I'm happy with it. With this light color, natural welt, and a brown thread it is hard to to hide any mistakes any anything you're gonna see it but we ended up getting a nice beautiful stitch all the way around next step is to cut out heel bases 
glue that on. And then we got our lug top lift. They're gonna go on top, refinish it, and then we are all good to go. All right, so I got one piece on there. We're stacking up another leather piece for the heel block. Are going to be tanks let me tell you so what we're going to do is trim the edges and then we're going to go ahead and balance it so on the last reel that i did people were asking me why the heel block was wedged um so when you stack up the leather heel bases which is like that and you don't taper the front you can see there's a big old gap right there so when it's glued you just get a big old it, it does that's not how it's supposed to work and it shoots pain right up in here the boots aren't comfortable they're not supposed to be supposed to be like that so by sanding the front here making it into a wedge it sits more level and then when you put pressure here in the back it sits flat and you have a well balanced shoe and it's not going to be super uncomfortable you won't feel pain right up in here and it's just the way things are supposed to be done. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and bounce this side out, glue our top lifts on, and then continue. We got it rough trimmed, right, around the edges. We still got to do the final trim. You can see there's still extra more. But before I do that, what I'm going to do, switch over to my bigger last. I'm actually going to take the heel block off. Right now it's just glued on. Which is what I wanted. Man, I, I tried to temporarily glue this so, so, it wouldn't, so I could take it off easier. Man. Not pretty. Okay. So you may ask, why did you do that? Well, you see along the inside it has that ridge right there. Now, I do have a sander that looks like this this piece that I'm able to get into it and sand like that however this is like a 24 grit so it's going to leave a lot of and also if you're not careful you can rough up this part of the heel so I took this off so we can trim it and finish it before we go ahead and put it back on so we can use a lot smoother sandpaper and It'll look a lot nicer right there. Alrighty, and we are done with this project. Vibram 430 soles with a lug pattern heel. I chose this one because it's a lot thicker than a lot of the, the Vibram lug pattern heels that I have. So this one just made more sense. It gets more wear and tear out of it, and um, still a good, good quality rubber. But now I know what you're thinking. It's really shiny for a pair of boots, or work boots. But the customer told me he's gonna start using these more as a casual dress uh, rather than a work boot. So that's why we went with more of a a crack. Um, that's why we went with more of a dressier, casual style recraft rather than trying to go for a, another work boot style um, soles. Although these are would be great work soles. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys remember what these looked like when they came in, but they were these are footbeds, completely trashed, just dry to the bones. We went and replaced the steel shanks because these are super rotted. Um, and just the soles and everything started to disintegrate. So he had these laced up in them. So I just went ahead and cut and dyed two new ones. So when he gets them, he can lace them in. Um, got new laces in there. Yeah, 
he's turned out pretty nice. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or follow me on Instagram. You can, you can message me from there about getting your shoes fixed. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next one.